Under international climate change negotiations, the UK is committed to obtaining 10% of its energy needs from renewable sources by 2010. The current figure is 2%. But from the northerly town of Huddersfield comes evidence that this ambitious target is feasible. Its skies are often overcast. It's therefore an unpromising spot for a solar breakthrough. Incredibly, energy from a mostly invisible sun is saving low-cost homes and luxury apartments alike 15% in their annual power bills. Huddersfield's Fernside Crescent is one example of this emission implausible. These are council homes owned by Kirklees, the local authority. But these are powered in part by the very latest in solar hardware. The aim of the project was to put lots and lots of solar PV uh, in Europe to drive down the cost of PV and obviously as a result to reduce people's fuel bills, um, to reduce uh, carbon dioxide emissions. Yeah, you might think, um, you know, if you've been to, to Spain or around uh, Italy, they put in the solar hot water heating systems. Um, but here, I guess you could look at it in terms of how much electricity does it make for the household. It's roughly up to sort of 15 percent of householders' electricity needs. Doreen Atfield is one of those proud householders. Right, okay then. They finally, I think, the switch was on in August. Um, so we were sort of the first of the area to have them. I'm really pleased about it. My cupboard's a bit full up, actually. Since February 28th, it was 254. April 16th, it was 347. I think it's going to be... Uh, great for me as far as my electric bill is concerned because we were all electric and uh, that is our big bill um, as I'm a pensioner right now. That's going to really help with my income. Now that the panels are accepted as part of life by tenants, the only change is a friendly rivalry. Over at Fernside uh, there's been competitions <laughs> for how much energy that they've produced. How's yours making more than mine? So I think that's going to be really interesting, you know. New houses now incorporate solar, electric and water heating technology and older houses have been fitted with the panels and better insulation. This is Primrose Hill Solar Village and they've had uh, solar photovoltaic and solar thermal systems retrofitted or bolted onto the roof so they sort of sit on top of the roof. Um, in the middle are Yorkshire Housing Group uh, new houses um, and they've had solar PV and solar thermal systems integrated into the roofs. The solar panels only save householders an average of around 100 US dollars a year. But solar is just one of the green energy sources being promoted by Kirklees. The council has an ambitious target of 30% of renewable energy in council buildings by 2011. In part two, we take a look at a redesign of the traditional cooking stove in Cambodia that it's claimed cuts charcoal use by up to 30%. And in India, an energy revolution could be taking place making gas for cooking from household waste. Cambodia lost two and a half million hectares of forest between 1990 and 2005. Illegal logging is one reason Another is fuel wood. Cambodia has no fossil fuel to speak of, and a rapidly increasing human population has come to depend on charcoal. So in addition to drying out water supplies and the raising of the last pockets of tropical forest, deforestation is robbing the world of yet one more sink for CO2. Now, a new design of stove is cutting the amount of charcoal needed to cook a meal. In 96, 97, I passed this, this area and this area was forest. I didn't know what happened during the last 10 years, but presumably it is because of the logging and also because of the charcoal uh, production. Yeah, you can see it's uh, no more forest here. And they uh, do not uh, use the efficient uh, device to cook. The Cambodia Fuelwood Saving Project, CFSP, set up in 1997 
in collaboration with the Ministry of Industry, Mines and Energy, aims to curb deforestation. A key part of this is reducing the demand for charcoal through the use of more efficient stoves. Currently, for a third of all Cambodians who live on less than 50 cents a day, there's no realistic alternative to charcoal for cooking. So CFSP has redesigned the traditional stove, making it more efficient and cutting charcoal use by up to a third. Most of the families, they, they use uh, this stove. We consider it as a traditional stove. Then, based on this, we introduce new design adopted from Thailand. This is combustion chamber. We force to make this smaller, so then you cannot put big quantity of charcoal. We make the grate with 37 holes, distributed evenly, so then distribution of the air gives you better uh, combustion. The metal cover is up to the top of the edge of the stove, then it is more durable, stronger, and we put a refractory liner made of rice husk uh, ash uh, mixed uh, with clay. So the heat here, it will be reflecting uh, back inside. This insulator is made of rice husk ash in order to prevent the heat loss uh, from the combustion chamber. CFSP estimates that 95% of Cambodians cook with biomass fuels on traditional stoves. But the new stove's advantages are obvious to the potential consumer. We train the producers on how to produce a new design, how to manage improved stove production, how to do the quality control, and we gather all of the producers and distributors into an association. At $3, the new stove is three times the price of the traditional one, but the buyers realize that the improved model will pay for itself. The traditional stove is much cheaper but uses a lot more fuel. One kilogram of charcoal with traditional stove lasts only two days, but with my new stove it may last three to four days. Not only does it save charcoal, but it cooks faster and is more durable. It is more expensive, costs 20,000 reals, but lasts much longer.